My name is Malcolm Mays. I'm 22 years old. I'm from South Central Los Angeles and all around Los Angeles, actually, to be exact. I'm a filmmaker. I'm a writer. I'm a director, producer, actor, a renaissance man at heart, and I'm just glad to be here. I grew up in South Central Los Angeles at one point in time in my life. I moved all around the city, and at one point we settled in a very uh, blood-populated area, and I ended up going to Dorsey High School, which is uh, probably one, at the time, one of the most vicious high schools at, at, in, the, in the city. It's full of, like, you know, black pea stones or whatever, and my uncle was a notorious, he's the founder and uh, creator of the Crips gang, Crip Gang in Los Angeles, and he's my mother's brother, my grandma's son and he kind of raised me over the phone and was I didn't even know that he was really a, a gang member until like later on in life because we were so my mom was such a quiet reserved person I won't get too detailed into it but being from an opposite flag like literally having you being of the bloodline of somebody who created an organization that was supposed to be positive and community activism and then was destroyed from the inside out by the government or the system at large and then having to grow up in a rival neighborhood from that gang was uh, definitely an experience to say the least and luckily the leader of the blood gang neighborhood that I was staying in T Rogers who's uh, right now locked up he's, he became a godfather to me uh, in the midst of my father leaving being periodically in and out of my life he became a kind of somewhat of a, a mentor and a protective man for me so I ended up actually becoming really really close with not only T, but Lucky Rogers, his son, and Daryl, and everybody who re literally ran that, that section, that neighborhood. So I had a really interesting experience when it came to the gang culture in Los Angeles because I was hardcore from, you know, my bloodline was from, you know, the opposite flag. And then I had to grow up in a, in a, in a complete opposite neighborhood, and that's actually what I ended up spending most of my childhood, my youth, my youth, actually. So I identified with Bloods and Crips by the, at the end of the day. And um, it just got really really crazy there's some instances you know I have a, a past and uh, film and music have always been art the arts have always been that outlet in which I could express my my discontent with the situations of my people the the, the social strife the, uh, the the gentrification of the neighborhood whites moving into the neighborhood moving us out um, Latinos moving into the neighborhood moving us out and them controlling the, the drug trade of well, them being our largest problem in America, yet they're, they're the, the lowest rung on a huge cartel, and they triple or quadruple the numbers of the normal black and gangs in Los Angeles, blood or crip. So it's kind of futile to gangbang, and I found that out very, very soon. Well, not very soon, but soon enough for a 22-year-old, uh, around 17, which is when I made my f first feature due to all the, based on the racial tensions between blacks and Latinos in the communities and in the schools and in the streets because I had lost so many friends. Uh, to this day, I'm probably the only person from my building still living in my age. This, that feature allowed me to express my discontent and allowed me to show some of the social ills and travesties that are being done to not only black peoples, but peoples in low socioeconomic areas. So this was always been kind of my soapbox, I guess, film. And not in a corny way, but motifs in themes, the way my characters believe certain things or move in certain ways. Because I don't want to preach to nobody, but I do think it's, it's good to keep the public informed while entertaining them. So this has always provided that for me. Season scene nine, take one. Action, action. I've always been interested in filmmaking. I started acting when I was about four, five years old. It was something my mother always cultivated in me. It was a way to get my mind off of the streets or that we may have been living in or the communities that we may have been staying in that were a little less than savory. And it kept my mind sharp and fresh and that compiled with a bunch of other artist, artistic endeavors my mother cultivated were kind of my escape from my situation when I had one. And even when I didn't, it was, it was a passion, it was a love. So my first features and shorts were just kind of like me and some buddies. Even when Panavision gave me a camera and I started working at certain pictures and they don't need some equipment to my first production at 17, it wasn't this many people or we didn't have this kind of budget. So I'm just honored and humbled that anybody would even, people like Ola Shell, who are amazing filmmakers who direct the picture of me, and who I met via our forays into the modeling world, via our intimate or significant others at the time. 
but um, to meet someone of his caliber and res have him respect me as an auteur or an artist or a, just a young kid trying to get on is, is a blessing. Uh, my DP, Corin Garber, is also a young dude, about 21 years old, USC Film School. He respects me. Godfrey, who directed, shoot, Chris Brown's biggest video at, at, right now, I think it's called uh, Turn Up the Music, directed the entire video. And he's here working as an associate producer because he respects me as a human being. And I think that's the biggest thing for me. It's not so much pressure of making the greatest Stanley Kubrick, uh, War Kong, you know, Mike Nichols film of all time. It's it's about doing what I can to the best of my ability to respect the level of respect I'm being given by my peers who I view as way beyond me <laughs> and when it comes to experience and years of on, on, on this type of project. So I'm just trying to do right by them. Scene 10, take two. If I could just kind of aggregate all the knowledge I've ever learned and composite it into one kind of serum for success, it would be a mixture of passion, preparation, and love, you know, like you have to be passionate about whatever you're doing. Uh, the people around you have to be passionate about you so that you can continue doing what you're doing. And, um, you know, your mother, your uncle, brothers, if you don't have those, you need somebody who's passionate about you and you need something that you're passionate about because you need a purpose and you need somebody to give you that foundation so that that purpose can be explored and cultivated into an actual blossom of, of, of benefits. Um, I would say preparation because just because you're passionate about something doesn't mean that you are prepared to to take on that that excursion. If you're passionate about something, go read. Don't wait for anybody to give you the information. If you want to know how to ride a bike, you know you went and rode a bike. You know I wanted to know about film, so I got up and spent countless hours at the library, local library, sifting through and gleaning as much information on the film books that they had in their reserve and the old pictures, the 1920s golden age films they had and even the horrible crappy, you know, 1980s, 1990s, 1970s uh, kung fu movies that they had. <laughs> you know, you do whatever you have to do to be prepared so when your opportunity comes where you can express that passion, you're prepared to do that. And the reason I say love is because love to me is unconditional and if you unconditionally love something you do it whether you have money or you don't and you need that you need to love this you need to love whatever it is that you want to be successful in um, well no I take that back you don't need to love everything that you want to be successful in but if you want to have a, a spirit that is at peace which I view as genuine success alongside the fruits of your labor so you can go to sleep with the fruits of your labor and truly have that success then you need to love it. You need to love it unconditionally. Whether those fruits were there or not, whether your tree bore fruit or not, you need to love that, that seed. And I think that those are the three things that I would probably tell a young person if they asked me.